I hope you had a really good Easter time. I hope you were able to enjoy something of the Easter worship and the message of Easter, the incredible thought that he loved us and he gave himself for us. It is really a truth that we can live on every day. There's sufficient there, isn't there, for every situation, for his love never, ever lessens. But I thought, as I was listening to some of the words of the modern songs, and many of them are marvellous, I, I really do love them. But there was something that struck me, and it was this idea that many of them are very upbeat, and they, they tend to give an aspiration that's maybe not always the true expression. So in other words, you sing this song, but you don't feel this song, you don't feel the sentiment in the song. And then maybe you feel a little bit inauthentic about what you're doing and worship becomes slightly less than what it should be. And so I began to think of this thought, are there no songs for Thomas? Songs that express the questions, less upbeat perhaps, maybe songs that are coming out of the heart of someone who's not so sure at that moment, but who knows enough but just maybe isn't able to express themselves in the way that some of the other songs would lead them. And so I just thought of this about how is it that some maybe can enter into the spirit of gladness, who doubt, who question, and who may well even be of a very different disposition. For some people are so sanguine in their personality that they never seem to be without a problem or a trouble. And it's true that earlier on we see Thomas in the Gospel records where he is, in John 11, the only one of the disciples who's willing to go with Jesus, even though he expresses his, his going in rather negative terms because Lazarus dies, word comes, and then that's, of course, where Jesus was under threat. And Thomas said, well, let us go that we may die with him. I've often thought of Thomas as someone who doesn't get a very good uh, press, as they call it. But here in John 20, now after the resurrection, well, on the first day, and a lot has happened at this time, here is Thomas, verse 24, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Wow, it's quite a statement. But as I think about Thomas, I have a, a great deal of empathy for him. And I think we should be really thankful for his honesty and his candour. For who is there who has not experienced moments of question and doubt? I certainly have. And I think this is the company of all the saints. I mean, surely look at the Psalms. They are full of questions and hesitation. And it isn't, isn't it interesting that then when we sing the Psalms, we're actually singing, in some cases, songs that express Thomas's thoughts. The word un <clears throat> unless, although it's not in the Greek original text, it is inferred, unless I is saying, I need evidence. And what's wrong with that? For the Lord himself counsels us to believe, but he doesn't say just believe. He does say that there are reasons. Thomas is willing to investigate. He's willing to place his hand into Jesus' side or his finger into Jesus' hand. And, and I think that that's a, not to be condemned. I often think about how this question of doubt and questions about doubt can be merely a passive attitude where we sit there and instead of actually getting on with it. I mean, can you imagine being lost on some journey and not willing to ask for help or being in a problem and not working hard to try to figure it out? I mean, sometimes it's just pure laziness that means that we're willing to lose the greatest blessings of peace and hope that so many people really need and certainly want. But then you may say, is it not just a matter of faith? Ah, yes, but faith is not passive. It's not passive faith because the word 
Faith is to believe in something. It's always active. Jesus doesn't call you merely to have faith in faith. And so by faith, we study the scripture. By faith, we listen to his words taught. By faith, we pray. By faith, we seek help because we believe that faith comes by hearing and that by the word of God. And so having found ourselves in Thomas's shoes many times, I'm sure, struggling with some question or some situation and maybe not sure of the answers, the, the, the whole thing is to go after the answer, to seek, to knock, to ask, to pray and to work at it with the gifts that God has given you, both personally and using the gifts he gives you through others. And if we only put a little energy and time we will spend that we would spend on so many other things, I mean, even take, for example, the length of time a person spends on listening to the news every day and transfer that time for a period into the research of the struggles they have into scriptures. I think they'd see a lot of progress. So Jesus' question to his disciples in Gethsemane was along those lines when he said, could you not watch with me for one hour? Surely that finds resonance here in this matter. Now, it's not the legalistic length of time but it's the spirit of being willing to give yourself to something. I fear so much is lost in our lives because we're just not committed. We don't want to wait. We don't want to sit at Jesus' feet. We don't want to put the effort in. But effort is a good thing. Effort is something God has blessed you and I with the ability. Isn't it wonderful those words you find in Jeremiah 29? If you seek me, with, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. That word begins with if, which is the great invitation of possibility. If, doesn't it? That, you know, it sets before you the here's an opportunity. Here's a, just like a, a kind of a, a potential. And then it talks about seeking. If you seek me, the great search. Of course, you might ask where to seek or where to begin to seek. Where does God reveal himself? Well, of course, primarily in scripture, directly by prayer. Complimented by, his, complimented by his creation and providence. He says, you will find me then. That's the great promise, isn't it? There's no hesitation here. No hesitation. You will find me. You see, the Lord wants to be found by us. Why, why else would he go to such lengths? I mean, there is no complex situation or, or treasure hunt for us here. Surely this is something that he says is possible. It's all about finding Jesus. It's about finding the Lord, the real Lord, as he reveals himself in Scripture. And I think it's so wonderful that you and I have been designed, created, that we can do this. Those words of Charles Wesley in his hymn, Jesus, lover of my soul, contain, Thou, O Christ, art all I want, more than all in thee I find. If you seek me, it says, you shall find me if you seek me with all your heart. Hmm. I remember the story I heard once of a child that was in, always pestering this old elder in India. The old elder was baptizing people and the child wanted to be baptized. Now, the, the elder discerned something going on in the child's heart and so he invited him into the water and then he took him and he held him under the water until he just was about to burst. his, He couldn't hold his breath any longer. And when the little boy burst through the surface of the water and gasped for that breath, and finally when he got himself settled down, the older elder said to him, Now, son, when you want Jesus as much as you wanted that breath, you come back to me. You see, I think that sums it up pretty well for us. If you seek me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. I wonder, am I speaking to someone who wants something to come to them on a plate? You know, you, you're not willing to put any effort in, but you still want the result. Now, you know that is not the way things happen. The Lord, even I think, has so designed things that by the engagement with these things, you are blessed. And so as you and I engage with the means that he's given us in his word and his word taught and explained, we will find our faith growing even as we get out there and engage. Now we're going to think about this theme a little bit through this week. Songs for Thomas. 
But today is really just urging us on. Let's get the right mindset. Let's be willing. God makes promises to those who are so willing.